Welcome back to another OpenTunes tutorial. In this video, we'll be creating an animated background uh, based off of an SVG file. So the file that I've chosen to use is from Pixabay. It's by author GDJ, so appreciate them creating this art. Um, free for commercial use, no attribution required. So we downloaded this, and I just downloaded the vector, the SVG version. Uh, and so actually what that did is it gave me this file right here. So we go... Uh, open it in Inkscape and I'll just show you. I had to do a little bit of modification for it before bringing it in um, to OpenTunes. So what I did, I just took it, I did Control shift g to ungroup it, and that way I could have this separate background. So I exported this as a separate um, rectangle and then deleted it, and it's just a PNG image. And then these are also all separate, uh, or they're all together grouped, but I want them to be separate. So I do Control shift g and that lets me just kind of separate these. And really, these are kind of the same thing anyway. If you notice, if I take this and just mirror it, it's actually, they're, they're all just the same version, just kind of slid over and reversed a little bit. But this lets us keep the colors. And so I just take this, I saved it as an SVG. And so I'm not gonna do it now because I already did it. Then I can just bring those in. So I have this background here, I'll just drag and drop in this PNG. And I'll just click load. That just loads the file from its source without bringing it in and recopying it to our project. But it's still, if we make changes to it, it's not gonna make any changes to the source still. So we, I'll just change this, the scaling of this, scale it down a little bit. I wanna keep it a little bit larger than my camera bounds though, because I want to animate this background. This kind of sun is gonna be moving in the sky a little bit. And then I'll bring in the actual SVG file. So I'll just drag and drop that as well. And this one I'm gonna do load as well. And so, if I zoom out, this button here right now is not checked. So this sub camera preview. So if I can't see anything, it's sort of gray because the background is gray too here. I can just click this and it helps, ever, helps me be able to see what I brought in here. And so then I can take these and what I really want, right now the sun is on its own level and then these three are on their own as well. I want these to be separate. The reason they're all looking like gray is because we just can't, they're not in view right now. If they, if they were all in here, we'd see the colors they actually are. But I'm going to keep them large now because i got to rescale them anyway. I'm going to do my selection tool. I'll just double click on, we'll do this one down here, and go Control X and move it over to column 3 and go Control V. So cut and paste. So it still appears there, but it's not really there. Then we go back to this one. We'll double click, go Control X, column 4, Control V. So because I want these buildings to be animated on their own separate, um, well, to animate and move separately, um, I need them each to be on their own separate column. But now composited, they're all together, and I can turn off uh, I can turn off viewing any certain part if I want to as well. Uh, it works better when it's actually in the camera frame. Let's take our first uh, column two here. Let's grab the animate tool and let's move at scale it down first. In fact, we'll just scale all of these down to roughly the same size, and then we'll move them. So we go position. And we'll do this first one. We'll position it sort of back in the back here. It's okay that it's going off the frame a little bit, I think. And then we'll grab the third one. I should have zoomed in here, kind of. We'll see more what's happened now. There we go. So this one, I kind of want th these the darker, these really black buildings to be off. And then I want them to kind of animate and come up like this. So we'll start them down here. And actually, this is actually looking pretty good how it is right now. So I'm going to have everything rise up and then sliding left and right a little bit. And then have that sun move. So everything needs to be keyframed. It all has it has a keyframe now because I started doing some stuff with the animation. So it sets some keyframes for scaling and position already. I'm going to select the very first frame here in column 1. Hold down the shift key and go to column 4 and click. So they're all selected. Then drag this handle down and we'll drag it all the way down to frame 100. It's taking a little bit longer because these are vectors. Whenever I work in vector, I've noticed with, with an SVG file that I've imported, it kind of slows things down a little bit. And so in this view anyway, if I turn it to the, if I disable this, it'll change it a little bit too. But just know that vector, at least for me, um, takes a little bit longer, especially to render the animation. All right, now I'm gonna come over here to the sun and go to the very last, since I already know I have a keyframe in frame one, I'll go to frame 100 and we'll move that. In fact, actually what I wanna really do is change it in the start. I want the sun to kinda of be down here at first and then I want it to end up there in the middle. So we'll have it end kind of right here. 
yeah, that looks pretty cool. It's almost looking like it's causing an effect on the on these, but it's not really. Okay, let's come over to this one now, and it is where we want it to be. We want maybe we want it to shift up and to the right a little bit. So we'll go down to frame 100 on column two, which are these buildings in the back, and we'll just move them up and over this way, maybe quite a bit over this way. All right, and then we can just look and see how this is starting to look. Oh, again, if I turn this off, it'll render much quicker. So, so far, things are looking pretty good like that. Uh, then, you know what, though? I'm going to change the sun again one more time. I just want it to be over here instead and go up to there. Okay. Oh, but i got to have it be about like that. Okay. So now we'll come to column three, and that's the one that in, appears in gray now because of the view I'm in. And I'm going to uh, let's have it come up and over this way a little bit. Or maybe just over and actually maybe just more like over. And then we'll have uh, end up a little bit. And now we'll do the last one. And these ones are the ones that are going to did I go down to the oh I didn't even do it. You know what? I just ended up moving that on frame one. So I didn't actually create a keyframe on frame one hundred, which is what I wanted to do. Let's do that. Now, frame one, we'll come to frame one hundred on column four and move these up. And they'll just kind of go up. Maybe they'll go slightly up and over. So this is kind of how this the it will end, how it'll look at in the end, which means I want to change this one so that I want these buildings to be up a little higher too. Oh, okay, maybe there. Let's see how that looks. So far, I can tell these buildings I want to be up. Oh, not these ones. These buildings I want to be up a little bit more. And then I'm going to actually adjust the camera as well. So if I want to see exactly what the camera can see, I can just click this. This shows me what the camera, what the actual camera will see. So I don't see the the background changing. I mean the out out of the bounds of the camera. That looks pretty cool. And this is just a rendering, so it'll look much smoother and, and cleaner when we actually render it out. I mean it's just like a a quick rendering. So um, yeah, I guess let's just do the camera now. So for the camera. We'll go to the animation tab here, and we can actually adjust the zoom of this. So we could go in and select every one of these and scale them in, a uh, scale scale it and make the buildings larger and make the background larger to give it the effect that we're like zooming in closer. But instead, we can just do we can control just the camera. So to do that, we just come over here to camera. So we've learned before it's in our stage schematic. The camera's just sitting over here. We can actually. We can do some different things with it, but what we really want to do is just select the camera and go down to Z. So we have the Z of our camera appear here in the function editor, and then we'll right click in frame one and go to set key. So now we have the key set at 16, which is the distance away from the, the uh, if we click in this 3D mode, we can kind of see it's 16, I'm not sure what it is, but 16 units away. The field of depth of field is 16 away from our scene. And everything else is our, in our scene is on the same um, Z axis, but the camera is kind of 16 away. So we can, come, we can come down to 100, and by 100, we want it to be different. So we scroll down here, and again, we're doing it in the function editor because the camera is not really an object. It's not really a level that we're editing in the, a column. It doesn't have its column, so we have to change it down here. So we'll click on 100. And then we'll say by 100, we would like it to be, and I'm going to come actually to this view to, to do this one. We would like the camera to be, I'll hold down the control key, and it brings up this Z, and I can left click and zoom in. So see now the camera's shrinking down a little bit. Maybe we want the camera to be right in here by that point in time, or even closer. Let's have it be really close in there. So now if we play it back, it just shows everything. It's kind of confusing in this view. It shows everything that's going on. But if we switch over to the camera view, it's a much better picture. We see it's actually zooming in here. The camera zooms in while everything else is happening. And the only other thing I might want to change is to lower the camera, which we can do. We just go to the camera over here, uh, the, the folder that says camera, and we want to go to the north-south and adjust that as well. So north-south right now doesn't have a keyframe, so we'll go right click set key on north south. We could also just select camera to see all the options at once, but this is kind of a good way to keep them separate. So north south is set right there to zero, and then by um, 100, let's just move it down 
let's have the camera looking maybe like here a little bit better so now that'll look really nice so we just kind of zoom in here and that's it oh look I noticed there's a little bit of white space in the corner here so one of our something in here is doing something a little bit strange at the at the very start let's go back to frame one and we can fix that it's our background is just not quite where we want it to be so make sure positions there we will change the background now that's better awesome I'm gonna render this out just because we haven't done a lot of rendering so I'm gonna go file and I'm going to go to render to mp4 you have to have ffmpeg configured properly in order for this to work I'll just pause the video it'll take a 30 seconds to render okay that took a little bit to render like I said about 30 seconds um, and that's because we're working in vector and if I just go to what I rendered out here it is going to be this right here. So this is what our final rendering looks like, watching it back in VLC player. Pretty cool, huh? Well, go ahead and play with that, and uh, we'll be using some more of the camera, and there's actually some more things we can do. We can change the, the z-axis of these other objects, too. There's a lot of fun stuff we can do in this 3D view to create kind of that like parallax effect. So thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave your questions, comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video informative. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.